My name's Rob and I'm from Australia and I love travelling to new countries. I've been travelling around Kazakhstan and I've been using my social media to reach out to interesting families. I want to understand how this country fits together. So, if you want to prove the people of Kazakhstan are the most hospitable, then invite me. In today's Invite Me program, Australian traveller Robert Boyd has received an invitation from Ulbalsan Akhmedova, the first female builder of the Magnastar region and head of the health resort. Right now, he's going to Western Kazakhstan to find out What's the secret of successful fishing? Why Radon Springs made the Mangostau region world famous? And how to cook tasty fish pomac? G'day there everyone. My name's Rob and I'm from Australia. And I love to travel to new countries. But most of all, find out the most interesting facts about people's origins, cultures, and traditions. Along the way, made some new friends. So, if you want to prove that the people of Kazakhstan are the most hospitable, then invite me. Hey, you know I hate going to the normal tourist destinations. I believe if you want to really get to know a country, you have to know its people, their values, traditions, and culture. I've been using my social network to reach out across Kazakhstan for invites. I want to know all the different regions. Today I got an invite from a lady called Ulbossum from the Mangostau region. She's got something exciting to show me, Raiden baths. I can't wait to try it. We better get going. Hey guys, we're in the Magnastau region at the moment. It's a really interesting place. And guess what? It has the youngest city of Kazakhstan right here. It's only 54 years old. Guess which city it is? Okay, I'll help you. It's Aktau. Now, this city is really famous because it's the only seaport in Kazakhstan. It has dry goods coming through, oil products, and crude oil as well. It's a pretty interesting place. Let's go check it out. Mangostau is an industrial region. A quarter of Kazakhstan's oil reserves is concentrated in this region. In addition, there is also gas and limestone. A lot of the buildings in Mangostau were built using the lighter. Uranium was discovered in this region a bit more than 50 years ago. Needless to say, this area is rich in minerals. However, the environment is quite restrained here, which makes it charming. Now, how do they say, birds of a feather flock together? I just can't walk past these guys fishing. I'm gonna have to go check this out. G'day, how are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? How is the fishing here today? Yeah, there's some fish and they're biting, but not very well. And what do you use for fishing bait in these waters? We mainly catch grey mullets here. Grey mullet is a fish species. Marine worms we use as lures to attract them. 
So tell me, how big is the biggest fish you've caught in this part of the sea here? We caught fish of this size. Great mullets can reach this size. Yes, they're different. They're different in size. However, you can catch fish of a large size mainly in autumn, in October and November. So when you do catch those big fish, what do you make out of it in this area? People like fish beshpamak here, in the manga style region. Actually, it's our main dish. Beshpamak made out of fish? That's pretty amazing. I actually cannot imagine it. I've tried meat beshpamak and I love it, but fish beshpamak? I'm not sure about this. Can I have to try it? Robert. Robert, do you want to try fishing? The Caspian Sea coastline in Mangostau is almost 1,400 kilometers long. Industrial fishing has been practiced for 86 years here. A fishing season lasts from March until November in this region, and as approximately 5,000 tons of fish are caught over this period. These fish include grey mullets, wild carp, pike perches, breams, volba, and sprats. I don't know about the majority of these fish, which is why I'll be glad to catch any of them in the Caspian Sea. Well done, you did great. Really? Sure, you did great. Hope we can catch a big one. I need to check out this fish come up. Uh, no fish. <laughs> some days you get lucky, some days you don't. I'm afraid I have to go now. Well, Boston's busy waiting for me, so thank you so much. I really enjoyed that. Come here again, Robert. Thank you very much. Rachmed. <laughs> I hope you catch some fish soon. <laughs> it was a pity I had to stop fishing without catching any grey mullets. I just didn't have time for it. I couldn't wait to enter the Radon Springs and meet the person who inspired me to make this journey. Oh, Balson, thank you so much for inviting me. Welcome to Mangostal. Robert, first I invite you to our health resort to relax after your journey. Excellent. Let's do it. Oh, wow. Robert, this is my office. Mm-hmm. I've been an entrepreneur for 31 years. This is part of the results I achieved in that life. I hold dear that special merit medal, and he is also the honorable builder of Kazakhstan medal. In my understanding, this is very rare profession for women. How did you get interested in, how did you find yourself in this job? That's really fascinating. And what type of profession do you have? In general, I've got a job as an accounting clerk, which means I deal with accountancy. First I was engaged in transport services and then building. I've already worked in building sphere for 21 years. Well, it turned out this way. It was perestroika period when any jobs which could be useful for people were in demand. After that, I really became absorbed into building. Wow, that's a really interesting story. I'm really glad that you shared that with me. Robert, I think I've showed you a small part of my life. And now I want to show you the health complex called Saya. Let's go. We could have a rest and hide from Mangostal's scorching sun in the local health center, which is what they call a cross between a spa center and a camping site here. Do you feel it already? Yes. It's a pleasant procedure, isn't it? Yes. If you spend at least 10 days here, it can improve your health significantly. It's said that the spa treatments, massage and physiotherapy treatments help to cure various illnesses, improve your body tone and invigorate you. However, the majority of people come here from all regions of Kazakhstan and even from neighboring countries because of the local water. It seems that the healing water runs from all faucets here. Does it cure all illnesses? It's very pleasant. It turns out that this healing water inspired Ulbosan to open a health resort here. Actually, the woman suffered from a serious illness a few years ago. 
After that, she was bedridden and then confined to a wheelchair. She says that the spring radon water made her healthy again. Now Ulbosan uses it to help other people recover from illnesses. Ah, I love the smell of the sea breeze. It reminds me of home. This isn't like any other part of Kazakhstan I've been before. It's, it's lovely. I'm relaxing too much. But before, please tell me, when did you open this place? Actually, it's a sacred area of Kazakhstan here. The water and thermal springs were discovered in 1988, 1989. The conclusion saying that this water is unique was made in Moscow in 1990. I want you to feel and try this water, understand how it flows, feel its temperature and realize how wonderful it is. So I've heard about the Raiden waters in Europe. They're very famous. And I was wondering about this one. So I understand a little bit about how it was discovered, but you've had the water tested, haven't you? Can you tell me a little bit about that? This water is unique. We sent its samples to the Pitagorsk Baniology Research Institute where they drew a conclusion that when applied externally, this water is unmatched. And when consumed internally, it's comparable to Toman and Nozhen Serpentskai water, which belongs to a group of 30. It means it has everything a person needs, including iron, bromine, and potassium. According to academics and medics, it has beneficial influence on the cardiovascular system, nervous system, gastrointestinal tract, and musculoskeletal system when applied externally. When consumed internally, it helps cure such internal diseases such as chronic gastritis, liver and kidney diseases. It also boosts metabolism, which helps cure diabetes and various skin diseases. I can show you tables, but in general, you need to feel it, dip yourself into it and try it. Mm, so this must be a national treasure for Kazakhstan then. It must be really important, or at least giving people an opportunity to try it and see what kind of uh, diseases and illnesses that it can cure for them too. Actually, this Mangostau area is considered sacred. Its spring is a miracle, a gift by nature, probably from the heavens. So with this water, how hot is it and is it fresh? Can I drink it? When water comes up from the underground, its temperature is 56 degrees Celsius. Here the temperature is about 36 to 38 degrees. Its temperature should be similar to people's body temperature, otherwise it can bring harm to people. That's why we turn it off at night and cool it down a little so nobody collapses. I just remember how difficult it was when I was confined to a wheelchair. I was offered to have a surgery. Lucky I recovered without it. Vertebrae surgery is very complicated, so I didn't know how much time I had. And while I was alive, I wanted to create something. You know, it's a real miracle when you see how people recover, enjoy it to a certain extent. Water, grass, soil and air help a person from the place that they were born and lived because they got used to it. It's a place where they were born. Hey guys, I want to tell you about the Shishenkov source. It used to be an oil hole from a drill platform. But when they found that they couldn't exploit the oil anymore, they pulled out. But luckily, hot water's kept on bubbling out, and it's still bubbling out now. So this is the source of these amazing hot water pools. It's pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Robert, I want you to try our water. Oh, it's quite hot. It smells a bit salty. 
Mmm, it is salty. That's a really unique taste. Well, I don't know if I like drinking it, but I definitely want to go and try out bathing in it. I'll be healthy inside and out. Let's go. Well, thank you. Let's go. Actually, radon is a radioactive gas. If you handle it carelessly, it can cause serious harm to health. Instead of being cured by it, you'll suffer from the opposite effect. To prevent it, strict rules of taking radon baths were established. For instance, you can't dive into this water. When you're going into the water, your thorax and head must be above the water. In addition, you mustn't make any rapid movements. Roll over or use a towel after having a bath. It's said that radon remains on your skin for about two hours, continuing its radioactive and beneficial influence on your body. After having a radon bath and receiving radon treatments, patients are supposed to have a rest. However, I don't have time for it. In addition, Ulbasan has offered to try something interesting. Robert, our national dish is called bishpamak. However, we've decided to surprise you today and make bishpamak with fish. To do it, we need to open a cooking pot. We should pour water. Mm -hmm. Pour it. Mm -hmm. Now I should put fish in it. Give it to me. Don't hurry. Fishy, fishy. Fish barmak. So it turns out to be fish pamak. We should close it. Now make a fire. Take the matches and paper. Thank you. It's good news. It means I'm going to try this amazing dish, which is fish pamak, today. It's interesting that the fish pamak word contains two words. The English fish and the Turkic bamak, which translates as fingers. Actually, fish pamak stands for five fingers. When the nomads ate this dish, which is traditionally made with meat, they didn't use cutlery and ate it with their hands. As a result, this led to such an unusual name. So I know about fish pamak with horse meat, but what about fish pamak? Why did people start to use fish? And what type of fish? Actually, all species of fish are used. Today, we're making it with sturgeon species. It's amazing. This is Oshak, which is a national stove and a large cooking pot. Previously, the Kazakhs cooked in this way in the steppe. It has continued since ancient times. It must boil. Put two more, and then we'll go roll out the dough. Robert, in order to make beshpamak, we need to roll out dough. The dough is here. Ah, mm-hmm. Take it in your hand. Oh, it's so soft. Mm. Make them larger. <laughs> Fish beshpamak has been cooked since ancient times in the Mangostar region because of the region's climate and special characteristics. It's difficult to rear cattle in the salt marshes and dry climate, which is why, unlike meat, there's always a lot of fish here in the food. Looks like Kazakh pizza. <laughs> Almost, but it's different. Now, do you like this? Like this? Yes. Dough for bishpamak should be thin, so first roll it out with hands and then we'll use a rolling pin. After that, we can roll out the dough. And what's this? It's a special rolling pin used to roll out dough. I'm a bit worried about how this could be. Maybe it's supposed to be round. It's OK. Take into account that you're doing it for the first time. You managed it nicely. I wouldn't think you're rolling out dough for the first time. I think mine would look better as a saddle for a horse than a bishpamak, maybe. 
<laughs> See? You need to roll it out more. It should be thin. See, I... It's a little bit like Australia. It's okay, don't worry. According to Ulbalsan, the fish dish contains the same ingredients as ordinary bishpamak does. They're dough, onions, and if you wish, you can add carrots and potatoes too. However, it takes much less time to cook fish pamuk. As a rule, the meat is stewed in broth for about four hours, while it takes 40 minutes to cook with fish. Is this uh, fish pamuk more healthy than the regular fish pamuk? Of course, it contains fish, which is why it's less fatty, but very healthy and quickly absorbed into the body. How long does it take to cook? It takes three to five minutes at most. We've put in the dough there and it's sunk to the bottom. When it starts to boil, the dough will rise to the surface. When it rises, it means it's ready. What is the pasta or bishpamak made out of? In general, the dish called bishpamak is made with rolled out dough. Now we use fish to make it, but there isn't much difference. Tuzduk, which contains onions we chopped and salt, is added too. We need to boil it just a little and that's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we will chop fish, put it on the top, and our fish pamak will be ready. Now put the dish and I'll take it out. Oh, that looks good. It looks like rice noodles from, from maybe Vietnam or Thailand. It should look this way. It looks good and beautiful. So it's fish pamak because you're fishing for this. Yes, we catch the dough too. The fish has already been caught. Wow, super. Now, cut it like this so it's easy to eat. It seems that Robert has lived on the Caspian seashore all his life and studied in Kazakhstan. That's all, it's ready. Excellent. Now I'd like to introduce my family to you. This is my eldest daughter, Roshan. This is Igrun. This is Roshan's husband, Arudak. And this is my granddaughter, Asil. This is my grandson, Alpumas. This is my daughter-in-law. This is our little Aralun, and this is Kuda, or son-in-law's father. I thought all the members of Ulbasan's friendly family had gathered for the celebratory meal. However, not all of them were there. I was surprised to find out that she has five children and seven grandchildren. In order to show respect for older people and dear guests, we give them these places of honor. They are also the first to receive food. Thank you. I've never tried fish pamak before. This is the very first time I've seen it, let alone getting to help make it. Let's give it a go. Mmm. It's good. I like it. Because we cook together. Aha, uh -huh, this must be the trick. Who would have thought? That's really good. Mm -hmm. You have magic. Tell me about your family. Do you have any special traditions? Well, we have a tradition. For example, when it's somebody's birthday, we all gather before midnight to be the first to wish them happy birthday. We bring presents, a cake and balloons. It's very interesting and we all have a lot of fun. And tell me, family seems really important for Kazakh people. Why is that? Actually, it's the Kazakhs' unwritten law. 
We can say that's an innate law. For example, we consider it impossible for a brother to leave his sisters or stop looking for them. Regardless of the distance between them, they'll continue keeping in touch with each other. It's the tradition we all follow. If you invite guests and some of them aren't at the table, it's considered a sin. By the way, when we are sitting at the table, it was the first time I didn't feel hot in Mangastau. A pleasant atmosphere prevailed in the place where we were, and the interior was unique there. Of course, it awakened my interest. Please tell me what this building is, it's amazing. It's called yurt. A yurt is covered with felt. It's warm in the yurt in winter and cool in summer. Now we set it up in the yard and all our family gathers in it. It's good and cozy inside and we have fun here. A yurt is a house without corners. It's brown, pretty cool stuff. And like anything that's genius, it's super simple. It has thin little wooden frames, which are easy to pack up and then put on a cart and take to another place. It's wonderful. And the most important thing that I found was in the center, which it's very famous for, there's an opening with a cross across it. It lets the sun shine in and then it lets the smoke out. Genius. A yurt is really an ingenious invention of nomads. It takes little time to set up and it's easy to move it from one place to another. It was always cool in it during hot days and the Kazakhs could make it warmer with the help of a second layer of felt in cold winters. A yurt is conventionally divided into seven parts. There is a half in the very center of the yurt, a place of honor for guests located opposite the door. The owner's place is on the left of the place of honor. A kitchen part, a place for young family members, a place where harnesses is kept and an entrance. Usually the Kazakhs try to decorate the place for guests with carpets, brightly embroidered bedding, weapons and musical instruments. It's interesting that the Kazakhs pay attention to the way a guest crosses the threshold of the yurt. If you cross it with your right feet and your head bowed, it means to show you respect. By the way, in order to avoid making this mistake due to callousness or absent-mindedness, the yurt threshold is made high on purpose and the upper beam above the door is low. I did everything correct and entered with my right foot. We've got a present for you. Usually we give a chapan to an honorable guest. Let's go and we'll give it to you. Wow, that's amazing. Let's check this out. Wow, it's so beautiful. That's a really deep, wonderful color. Is it good? Good, good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Spasiba. Thank you. Rakhmed. <laughs> I was amazed by this hospitality. Telling the truth, I'll always be surprised by Kazakhstan's residents' sincerity, generosity and openness. I received a wonderful chapan, which is a robe popular in countries of Central Asia, as a commemorative gift from Moldbosson's family. Traditionally, chapans were sewed using camel's hair, covered with felt or corduroy, and embraided by hand with patterns. The Kazakhs showed great respect to poets, brave warriors or travelers who had come from distant areas. In general, I got lucky. Oh, my parents will be so surprised when I return to Australia wearing this beautiful chapan. I'd like to say... You look great. I'd like to say thank you to you and your family for inviting me here today. It was really amazing, so finding out how this oil rig hole's been turned into a water with special gifts that heal you is just super amazing. Being able to learn how to make fish pamuk, and that's going to be a famous memory, I think. Fish pamuk has been really good, even though I'm probably not very good at it. But your hospitality is amazing. Beautiful meal, a lovely family. It was just an amazing memory. Thank you very much. And I'm wondering if I could ask one more thing. Could I get a selfie with your family? You're welcome. We're always happy when guests come. Come here again with your parents. Show them our country, sacred land of Kazakhstan, where there's Mangostal, Aktau, and the Caspian Sea.
Kazakhstan, what an amazing country. Wherever you travel, you'll always be welcome at a Kazakh table. Very hospitable people. If you don't believe me, come here and try it. Now it's time for me to find my next adventure. So invite me.